G'day to you. You're probably watching this section of uh, the Lunch and Learn and it's a replay. I want you to type in the number two because today we're going to be talking about the stuff that Aristotle taught us about marketing that was almost um, 2,000 years ago. So you're going to learn the art of persuasion that was redefined 2,000 years ago. All right, so I see the uh, live section of the show has just tuned in. I'm going to segue to that. But if you're watching the replay, please type in the number two so that we understand which part, um, you know, you just came in through. Now I see Robert has just tuned in. Mike James, thank you so much for tuning in, my man. Um, I saw Duncan Wasaka sliding in a little bit earlier on. So let me turn this down a little bit just so that everybody understands me. I see Sam Moon Voyage is in the house. Thank you so much. No, Lisa, you're watching this live. I say that part, um, you know, so that people can get to understand me. All right. So today, basically, we're talking about the art of persuasion and how you can actually get people to act upon what it is that you're saying or what story you're telling them. Because there's no point in writing a book and nobody reads it. There's no point in creating a video and nobody watches it. It's because you haven't persuaded the people enough and you haven't actually outlaid what your actual story is. So I'm going to be taking, um, you know, the, the, the lessons that I learned uh, from Peter Thompson in his book, Persuading Aristotle. Um, and uh, basically what he says is in the information age, um, where the contest of ideas is paramount, being able to get others to accept your idea is what makes the difference between success and failure. All right. Yet the art of persuasion was redefined 2000 years ago in the Lucium of ancient Greece, where Aristotle, the master of rhetoric, taught the timeless secrets of ethos. Logos and pathos. Those are the things I'm going to be talking about today. Ethos, logos, and pathos. I feel like I'm speaking a totally different language right here. Now, for those that are not uh, familiar with uh, what's about to happen here, let me just give you a bit of context. Uh, my name is Prosper Taruvinga, and I believe that if you're running an online business, it should be profitable, and you should actually enjoy um, you know, running that business. And I also believe that as an online business person, you should be able to create for and relate to your audience in order to demand money off of them all right so that's the reason why every single day at 2 p.m est we sit around and i teach you components of this four-step system that i created which is the online prosperity blueprint that is designed to help you grow in your business and actually gain a bit of profit so it helps you earn more money with less struggle okay i lead a team of digital marketing experts that will help you um you know, create your online footprint and optimize your business for growth. So that's the reason why we sit around here and then, you know, we can discuss the things that would actually help you, um, you know, actually earn more money within your business. And today we're talking um, a bit of a recap on the book that I was reading um, called Persuading Aristotle. And um, it's got three lessons in it. Ethos, Logos and Pathos. All right. Now, Lisa says, hi, Prosper. It's great to be here listening to you live. Absolutely. Thank you so much um, for your support. I really want to inspire you to do things that will inspire you. Now, if you're watching this on... Um, um, on YouTube right now, please subscribe to the channel because every single day, like I said, we're always coming up with something new. Maybe I've read a book, I'm giving you a review about it, or maybe it's about the current, um, you know, situation with Facebook or whatever it is that would help you market scale your and grow your business, um, you know, so that it's profitable and enjoyable. So recently I've just read this book and basically it is a timeless art of persuasion, um, in business negotiation and in media. Media, all right, wherever you're going to be going, um, you know, um, whether it's online or offline, we do understand that you're going to need to have a message. And that message has to be delivered to a market. But for people to understand and give you attention or even start listening to what you've got to say, you have to hook them in such a way that you have persuaded them to take some sort of action. All right. So if you can't, um, you know, express yourself and, you know, evoke some sort of emotion in your message and 
within your market, hardly are people going to think, feel, or act any different when they see your brand. So that's the reason why I thought, um, I mean, it's, it's imperative right now while everybody else is wondering how they can reach their audience since Facebook has just, um, you know, started to cut down on the reach in pages to really reiterate lessons from, um, you know, ancient history as uh, because, you know, right now we are all seeking for answers. All right. So today I'm going to talk about ethos, logos and pathos. So tune in. Take notes. This is something new for me as well. Um, and I will be trying to reference this book since it's the one that has most of these teachings that um, you can't find anywhere else on the Internet. All right. So the reason why I really, really want to talk about this book is all about persuasion and it's all about um, getting your message through to the right kind of person so that they actually understand why they need to listen to you. All right. Now, quoting Aristotle, just reading from here, it says, the fool tells me his reasons. All right. But the wise man persuades me with my own. Now, in anything that we're going to be doing in life or in, um, you know, in, in, in trying to get people to understand our business and to understand who we are as a person. First of all, we really, really need to make sure that we've got somebody's attention. One thing for sure, you cannot persuade somebody who does not respect you. You cannot persuade somebody who does not have the um, you know, who doesn't have your, um, you know, who doesn't have the same worldview as you. All right. So Mike says, ah, yes, logos, ethos and pathos philosophy is king. Absolutely. Right now, we are looking for answers as to how can we actually reach our audience. And guess what? We might have cell phones, we might have mobile phones, but still the philosophy in communication, all these languages, all these things that are happening around us were discovered by people that existed in history. So basically what would have happened is they studied this before there was so much noise in the market and they were hurt. So this is now what we need to learn from them. All right. These people negotiated out of wars. All right. Every time if you if you invaded somebody's territory, they were going to fight you. They, they A war would erupt. But if you could talk at an emotional level, if you could talk at, at, a, at a level that was understood, and if you could talk at a level that people would actually comprehend what you're saying, you can convince people not to kill you. Now, it's now really, really easy, the world we live in, guys. Do you know what I mean? You don't even need to go and hunt. You walk on the street and nobody is threatening your life, and you can negotiate your way out of a parking fine. All right. So you need to know how to communicate to other human beings, even if these, um, you know, lessons are ancient, they are still usable and very, very vital. If you want to convince an audience to actually purchase from you, trust you or even do any transactions with you. I read somewhere where it says the only difference that you have between yourself and a caveman is the car that you drive. We still share the same brain with them. We still look for homoestasis. We still eat. We still, um, you know, need to congregate around each other to feel safe. So whatever they discovered back then is still very, very valid. And that's a at the, that's the whole um, emphasis in this um, episode today. Now, Mike says, my teacher always taught me that if I wanted to learn something uh, new, I should read something old. The older, the better. Absolutely. And if you understand, um, you know, the way I sort of operate, I don't operate in groups. I don't want to. Um, I really want things that are new, um, not new per se, but new in a way that we can actually get aha moments and then utilize them so that we can be doing have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable i, I see trish Mileli has just tuned in welcome aboard hope you've been doing fantastic all right so in whatever you're doing you're gonna need to convince people to purchase from you you're gonna need people to listen to your stuff you're gonna need people to read your blogs you're gonna need people to watch your content how are you going to do that in this noisy environment? How are you going to stand out? Are you going to be so different? How are you going to make other people realize your existence? 
All right. So the only way you have to be, do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable is to strike emotions within the people that you are sending your message to. That is the only way that people would actually understand. And that's the only way people would actually stop and start consuming your content. All right. I see Joe has just tuned in. Trish, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much. So whatever you're going to do, you can make your own argument. It has to make sense. And it has to have an emotional connection to the person that you're delivering it to. Otherwise, you're just contributing to the noise. You know? So, like what, um, you know, Peter Thompson says. Um, thousands of years ago, Aristotle, he was the tutor of some, a king who became Alexander the Great. Now, if you are trusted by somebody who became Alexander the Great, it means you know a thing or two about persuasion, all right? Now, Robert says, indeed, I aim for the soul and then want to connect with somebody. Absolutely, and how are you doing today? So, during his period, Aristotle, uh, Socrates, and uh, Plato, all of those people, they're still being quoted, um, you know, as the greats and people that discovered the acts of persuasion, public speaking, and all the stuff that we're utilizing today. So if you look at a movie, if you look at any speech, all the components that I'm going to be talking about, you know, these ethos, logos, and pathos are copied by the great presidents, movie makers, everybody that's creating a story so that another human being can actually understand it, all right? So like I was saying, thousands of um, you know years ago, this guy, Aristotle, he had lots of ideas about everything from religion, ethics, medicine, and science. All right. Some of the things we don't have to study or look further because you know what? People like Aristotle already did the research for us. You know, he also happened to be a persuasive um, speaker and he is so persuasive. And as much as his teachings are still shaping the way we think in the world today. So that's the reason why you have to pay particular attention to this video today. And you might be asking, why is it important? Why now? Why am I talking about this? Look at what's happening in your newsfeed right now. People are not um, receiving your message because you're not being persuasive enough. You're not trustworthy enough. You're not evoking the right kind of emotions enough. All right. So after reading this book, I actually realized there's work to be done if you want to be, do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. All right. So, you know, the guy that's been talked about in here, Aristotle, he developed an interesting, um, you know, theory about persuasion. He actually believed that, you know, with every persuasive, you know, argument, there were three, um, you know, pillars that I keep referring to and these that I keep talking about. This, um, which happens to be the ethos. Ethos, um, ethos is all about your credibility. All right. And then you have your pathos. Pathos is all about emotion, all right? And then pretty much from pathos, you have logos, which becomes logic and reason. Some people try and convince people because what they think about their product is right, but people buy based on emotion, all right? People don't buy things because they, they need an extra tool or they need an extra whatever. They buy the story behind, um, you know, whatever it is they're making a purchase off of. All right. So you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're striking an emotion so that your audience can actually think for themselves, feel something after they've heard what you're saying and actually act. All right. There's no point in writing a book that nobody is going to read. All right. So if you follow the three, um, you know, principles that Aristotle came up with, which I'm going to be talking about, you will actually be doing have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I see Chris Agar has just tuned in. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So like I was saying, Aristotle, before he became the, the, the mentor for Alexander the Great, he actually believed that if you missed or if you lacked any one of these three things, you, nobody would believe what you have to say. Nobody would care about what you had to say. And nobody would even think of following you or treating you as a leader. So this is his theory, um, you know, that, that, that he then 
formulated and has become the most important persuasion um, tactics ever written. You are going to need to persuade some sort of an audience to watch your videos. You're going to need to persuade somebody to read your book. You're going to need to persuade somebody to actually watch your content or buy from you. Without that persuasion, your business is null and void. You, people are not ignoring you. You're just not persuasive enough. Or even if you are, maybe you're too pushy or you're doing it wrong. All right. So you really need to figure out how are you striking these people with credibility? How are you striking these people with logic? And how are you evoking some sort of emotion with your products, with your services and with whichever way, um, you know, you, you, you're trying to convince people to transact with you there. I see Taf Shamana has just tuned in. Thank you so much, brother Annie. I'm working on your proposal, so let's keep talking, all right? So let's start off with the first thing, um, you know, that um, Aristotle talks about. It's ethos, all right? Um, it's, it's ethos. And ethos, like I said, has to do with credibility, all right? Aristotle, in his time, he actually believed that it didn't matter how, whether you were logical, how reasonable, or how um, factual your argument is, if the audience does not trust the person who's delivering the message, that message is falling on deaf ears. So if, let's say, you're going to be giving a speech, you're going to be doing a Facebook Live like this, or you're going to be writing a book, or you're going to be presenting to a lot of people, if you are not credible, if you do not have elements for people to actually trust you, then whatever you're going to say is going to fall on deaf ears. People do business with those they know, like, and trust. You have to build that trust, and it doesn't come cheap, it comes over the years. And I see Ali Madawi has just tuned in. Thank you so much. He hasn't even listened to what I'm saying, but he trusts that there's going to be content in this video. So this is what I'm talking about. Ethos. All right. It is all to do with credibility. What does the market look you, um, you know, think of you? Who do they and liken you to? And what does your audience say about you when you're not there? That's where credibility comes in. So your credibility happens to be, uh, you know, your personal brand. Credibility comes also with whatever authority, whatever content you put out there. Credibility comes up with how often are you seen in public with people that are of note? All right. So that's where it is. Even way before in, 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 in those times in 2000, I mean, 300 BC, Aristotle already knew that if you were going to say something and nobody trusted you, that message was not going to be listened to. So take note of who you are in the market, what people actually say and what feedback you're getting from people that spells out your credibility. Do you know what I mean? So this means that for you to be a truly persuasive person, for people to think, feel, and act after hearing what you've got to say, it starts way before you open your mouth. All right? You might think that you, you might convince people by, you know, stating the facts or things like that. If you haven't established yourself as an authority or as a credible person, you have lost long before you've begun. All right? So, you know, um, Peter Thompson mentions that, you know, modern day influencers like uh, Seth Gordon and people like Neil Patel, they've spent years and years by regularly putting out valuable content and that has already established their authority. Do you know what I mean? You can simply trust what Seth Gordon is saying because you know he's been doing it for years. And a lot of brands, we know them before we even think about buying a, a detergent. We already trust that it's going to work no matter if even if we haven't tried it because mom says so. Or we have word of mouth around that which builds their own credibility. You know, so a lot of people have spent tons and tons of time connecting and relating to their audience. What are you doing as a person today, tomorrow to increase your credibility? So you need to make sure that that credibility transcends you whenever you're not there. You know, it works for you when you're not there. So that the moment you open up your mouth, people already say, I know this guy, I trust him. And you've built the goodwill before you've even stepped on the scene. And this takes time to build, my friends. I think it was Warren Buffett that says it takes 20 years to build a reputation and only five minutes to ruin it. So what are you doing to craft that reputation? 
And if you're going to be an online business person or a marketer, it takes a, a good hard look at your brand, the authority that you have within your industry, the content that you're putting out there. Is it share worthy? Another test to see if you're credible enough is if you were an experience, would people buy a t-shirt after experiencing uh, your, your, your content? Would people buy a t-shirt after reading your blog and, and, and want to represent that, that brand? Do you know what I mean? So you really got to develop that ethos. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's found, um, you know, where your customers are and where your audience is giving you feedback. Establish your authority, you know, create for and relate for your audience so that by the time you say, hey, listen, guys, I've got something to sell, they would trust you because you've already been there for them. And Aristotle himself, he believed that the first part of any argument should be confirming your authority. That's the reason why he helped Alexander the Great to actually win in a lot of battles. And I think it was part of the Trojan horse that he also, um, you know, um, you know um, orchestrated. I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me on that. But that's all to do with Greek, um, you know, you know um, myths and my, my, my methodology or something like that. So credibility is important. What makes you credible today? Is it your, your, your work? What are you putting out there that makes you credible? All right. So I think on the ethos there, um, I, must have, I must have touched on a, a few other points. Now, the next thing um, that Peter Thompson talks about is, uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Pathos. All right. Pathos has to do with emotion. We humans are creatures of habit, all right? Um, if you want to get through to somebody, you got to, you know, string their heartstrings. Do you know what I mean? At the very core, no matter how proud we are as a species, we are still emotional creatures, all right? Ignoring that fact can actually undermine your message. No matter how reasonable the facts might be, if you don't take people's emotions into consideration, they are not going to listen to you. No matter how factual your product is, no matter how factual the argument you're presenting, if it's not striking the nerve, it's not striking the emotions of that person, what's in it for them? They are not going to listen and they are not going to value your credibility and you've lost that persuasion and you're not going to get that transaction. All right. So uh, according to Peter Thompson, he says that Aristotle, he actually theorized that to persuade somebody, you can't simply rely on reason or logic. Our brain is not, you know, designed to understand facts or numbers. It understands emotion, fear, hurt, um, laughter, all of those things. Make sure whenever you're presenting your work, whenever you're presenting on a, a speech or a message, whatever it is, are you striking no, no, notes in, in, in people's hearts so that your message actually sticks? Are you telling stories that resonate with them and what's actually happening within their life? What's in it for them? So you have to find a way in order to make your audience feel something. What do they feel and what do you want them to react to? You know, do you want them to be happy? Do you want them to be sad? Do you want them to, 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 you know, to, to, to be angry? What do you want them? What emotion are you trying to evoke from them so that they can actually associate your message with something that their brain can comprehend? All right. So whenever you really want to align with people, justify their failures. People are afraid of failing. All right. Encourage their dreams. Everybody's out there trying to be somebody, you know, trying not to make mistakes and trying to have a happier existence. Does your brand support any of that? Are you, are you um, literally confirming their suspicions? Are you, because people might be having a lot of suspicions about the market right now. Is your brand calming them? Because like I said, we need to be soothed as human beings. We are still emotional, no matter how tough we might be. So whether it's about hope, whether it's about anger, whether it's even humor, because if you, if somebody laughs at your content, Guess what happens? They feel like they like it and enjoyment. You know, that's why when people are um, 
nervous or something like that, you're encouraged to maybe throw in a joke or or get them to chew gum so that their body tells them that it's safe, it's okay, you can con continuously do that. So your message that is going to whatever market should connect that market with an emotion. Is your brand representing happiness? Is it representing sadness, strength, courage, fear, all of those things? What does your brand make people feel? When they hear your brand right now, what do, what do, what do, people, what do people feel about your brand? Can you just type in the comments if you know how people feel about your brand? I think Robert says, I remain consistent, although I have increased the positivity level um, through positive uh, actions made publicly. Absolutely. Okay. I want you to type in the comments there. What does your brand make people feel? Do you know what your brand makes people feel? You know? And um, if you really notice, people that write movies, advertisers, they understand the, the, the power of emotion marketing. You know, on the surface, I think you guys have been following Red Bull and how they are always, you know, um, you know involved in those scary sports or, you know, things that normal human beings cannot do. Just like the other time that dude had to jump from outer space, etc., etc. You know, Red Bull was giving them wings. The moment you see things like that from, um, you know, a, a, um, an energy drink, it no longer is the same as your mother, I mean, the mother brand of, uh, you know, energy drink or whatever other energy drink that's out there. So that's a marketing strategy that makes them special. That's a marketing strategy that actually makes them stand out from the noise in the marketplace. What does your brand make people feel? Apple makes people feel smart. Um, different, act differently, think different, whatever it is, it, it, it's evoking an emotion. And when people start thinking that you are like a cult, it's because people are emotionally attached to your brand. And all of that was defined by Aristotle back in 300, 2000 years ago. All right. So whatever is happening to us today, it's already been studied. So I encourage that whenever you get time, figure out all these things. Answers are usually in books. You know, our contemporary, um, you know, our contemporary coaches are also learning from these past and gone uh, mentors. Find out who, who, how you, you can make yourself better so that you are head and shoulders above everybody in your niche. You know? So like I was talking about uh, Red Bull, they invested heavily in extreme sports and, you know, organizing all these stunts so that people can get to associate with their brand. And guess what? They're allying with people's fears and throwing rocks at people's enemies. They are actually standing for something. What do you stand for? Because if you don't stand for anything, you will fall for whatever. All right. Robert says it seems... Uh, to representing positivity, although there has been some jealousy and that started from a wonderful live stream. Your friend had uh, you on a guest and I appeared. Yeah. All right. Cool. I, I just really want to continue talking about the three um, aspects here. So you really want to make audiences feel excited, happy, jittery, um, you know, laugh, play and, and feel something about your brand so that they associate it with what the brain can actually comprehend. And then you can harness that emotion by asking them for a transaction, you know? So for, for the average, you know, online business person who doesn't have maybe a big budget to pull off stunts like what Red Bull does, the only thing that you can actually do to establish that pathos with your audience is maybe a Facebook live like this. Find out how are you affecting and what emotions are you evoking in your audience? You know what I mean? People buy stories. We already have everything that we want in life. I'm going to buy yet another extra shirt because the story that's happening within that shop, the music that they're playing, the, 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 the person who is, um, what do you call it? The person who is, uh, talking to me, etc., etc. That's the story that's around that shop that design that makes me want to buy a shirt. I've already got thousands and thousands of shirts, but people buy stories. 
What emotions are you invoking within your clients or within your audience in order for them to transact with you? All right. So, you know, you should you should basically capture the audience imagination. Let them think for themselves, recreate what you're trying to tell them and evoke that emotion. That way, my friend, you are no longer the noise in the in, in, in the newsfeed. You know, you should always be on the lookout. What stories are you telling and what do these stories represent in your audience mind? And the last thing before I go um, that uh, Peter Thompson is talking about is uh, logos, which is what everybody else does, logic and reason. I mean, obviously, yes, we want people to feel things. Yes, we want people to find us as credible. But at least there has to be a bit of an element of logic and reason. You know, you know, even though logic and reason is not the most persuasive, it is understood that it's needed. It's not enough in of itself to persuade an audience, but at least a bit of logic is what then puts, you know, you know, turns the, the, the coin or actually, you know, pulls the, pushes the deal across, you know, let's say maybe a, a product is going to improve um, your life or maybe you are selling a book that might change uh, somebody's behavior or you might sell a book that might change somebody's, um, you know, financial situation or relationships or etc, etc. Based on facts alone, that's not enough because people cannot comprehend what they haven't experienced. So you want to make sure that people understand, have felt, and have seen that you are a credible source so that people can actually, um, you know, understand what you're talking about. And Chris says logic is a tool. Absolutely. As true as that statement might be, that logic is a tool, you have to show logical reasoning behind what the product can do and how useful and beneficial it can be. All right. Um, Lisa says, hi, Prosper. There's a technical difficulty with my mobile. I'm unable to hear you speaking. Is that the case with everybody else? Can people not hear me? Can you can you hear me? Or is that just Lisa's problem? All right. So a lot of marketers get caught up in trying to sell features, features, best selling. I talked about this at another um, show. You know, they try and, and make a sale just by focusing on the features of a product. That's the logic. Okay, this this car can go from zero to 60 in, um, in, in, in 30 seconds, whatever it is. You know what I mean? That's a big mistake to assume that the audience is, is going to immediately understand exactly how those features are going to be useful to them. All right. So you want to make sure that you've already invoked that credibility. You've already invoked, um, you know, your um, what do you call it? You've already invoked emotion. Because marketers like you and me, you, can, you cannot simply tell people that your products are awesome and you expect people to, to believe you, you know, make people make their own conclusions. And that's better because if somebody can convince themselves that this is a very good book to read or if a friend tells them, then guess what? They will fall in love with your content. They'll fall in love with your products. They'll fall in love with whatever you've got to put out there. You know, and I think um, Apple was a master in doing this by showcasing exactly how their new products and features can actually help their audience. And that's the reason why even if people haven't seen, um, you know, the products, they're out there queuing, even in the rain um, and, 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 and queuing out for the latest iPhone. So you need to combine storytelling with a bit of logic and, you know, you want to create ads that your audiences can actually see for themselves how useful your product can actually be while you're evoking an emotion in the process. All right. So you really need to take advantage of, um, you know, persuasion. It's, it's the last thing that I'm going to be talking about. And um, yeah, just making sure that you're driving your points home. So if you've been watching this and uh, you really enjoyed this, I it's something that I read recently. So I'm just giving you a report on what I read and I'm getting to understand it in the process as well. We're talking about Aristotle's, um, you know, pillars of persuasion, which are ethos, logos and pathos. All right. So you want to make sure that you've got that. You've got the credibility. You've got the emotion, um, you know, um, you know, emotions from your message. 
That way, you're not going to worry when Facebook says they won't be featuring your page in the newsfeed. All right. So if I if if if, if you're like me, you would really really look at this and start um, you know concentrating on. Am I credible enough in the in the market? Am I persuasive enough? You know, because you need to apply all of these three things in every situation, whether you're speaking in public and videos or in any of your content, so that it makes sense to the audience. Because that's how the audience has been trained in movies, in songs, everything that persuades uh, somebody, they use the three pillars that Aristotle came up with in 300 BC. So a lot of uh, savvy online businesses, they actually know, you know, that they need to give a persuasive pitch all they have because you only have one chance and one opportunity to make a lasting impression. So go ahead, take on Aristotle's three-step approach to persuasion and you'll get you and your business the results that you're actually seeking. First of all, you will stick out like a sore thumb in the newsfeed. And if you really, really want to stick out and you're an Australian business, um, you should come and join us um, at the Australian Business Online Directory. We basically helping small businesses like yourself to actually reach targeted audiences. You know why? Because whoever is coming to that directory has some sort of a pain and they need it fixed as soon as possible. All right. So type in the words DIR and I'll shoot you through um, a link so that you can set up your profile on the directory. I really believe that if you're an online business, your business should be profitable and enjoyable. And if you take on these three pillars that I just talked about, you will be able to create for and relate to an audience that actually respects you, that finds you credible, and that actually wants to do business with you. You know why? Because people do business with those they know, like, and trust. It's been a pleasure. Uh, talking to you guys. I really, really enjoyed this. And if you're watching this on the Australian Business Online Directory, leave a comment behind. And if you are, um, you know, on YouTube, subscribe to this channel. And if you're watching on, um, you know, on, um, on Facebook right now, thank you so much for the unwavering support. All you can do is all you can do, guys. And if you really found this um, highly educational, share this. All right. I really, really believe that your business is going to be profitable. I want you to have a wealthy year ahead. This has been a report from Peter Thompson's book, delivered to you by yours truly, Prosper Tarowinga. I really bid you a fantastic day ahead. Peace out.